Hi, my name is Amanda Garamani, and I'm an international criminal lawyer, a consultant, and a member of the Canadian Partnership for International Justice. I'm speaking to you today from Canada about what I think is the greatest success in international justice this year. I've been a member of the legal team representing Airtrain plaintiffs in a lawsuit here in Canada against a Canadian mining company for the alleged use of slavery and forced labor at their gold mine in Eritrea. This past February, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled on this case acknowledging for the first time that Canadian corporations can be held legally responsible for violating international law, including international human rights law. The court also acknowledged that international law has evolved away from a purely state-centric model and that international human rights norms are routinely being applied to private actors. This means that corporations are not excluded from liability if they breach international norms and that if they do violate international law, it triggers the right to a remedy for their victims. Canada has automatically incorporated customary international law into our domestic legal system. So if a Canadian corporation violates international law, it also means that they violated Canadian law. And that means there's a direct remedy available for victims in Canadian courts. This is a landmark judgment for corporate accountability. And I hope that other jurisdictions are paying attention and that they'll follow suit. Now, looking forward, this success also highlights what I think is one of the most important issues that we need to tackle in international justice in the coming year, criminal accountability for corporations and corporate actors. More and more, we're seeing corporations complicit in atrocity crimes and gross human rights violations. We see companies manufacturing weapons and selling them to countries that are waging war and targeting civilians. We see companies that are pillaging resources in fragile states. We see companies that are using forced labor, slavery, or child labor in the development of construction projects or mining projects or in the supply chain of some of our favorite products. We're also seeing companies that are developing technology and licensing and selling this technology to, to countries that are engaged in genocide and ethnic cleansing. We're also seeing companies supply uh, their services and goods to settler colonial countries for the purpose of maintaining an occupation against Indigenous peoples. We need a multitude of strategies to address these harms, but a clear and, in my opinion, underutilized avenue that we have available is criminal accountability for corporations that are complicit and financially benefiting from these crimes. Companies have revenues that sometimes exceed the GDP of some small countries making corporations even more influential and in the same vein more harmful than some states. If corporations are going to have rights under international law, they should also have the corresponding responsibilities under international law. The International Criminal Court doesn't have jurisdiction to prosecute corporations, but it can prosecute the directors and the officers that, are, that bear the greatest responsibility when it comes to corporate complicity in these crimes. It's also important to remember that International justice isn't just the International Criminal Court. Countries, especially those who have ratified the Rome Statute, have a responsibility to uphold international justice domestically. We can and we should start holding our corporations accountable at home through the criminal avenues that we have available.